Hey everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley. The place is kind of a mess right now. I got a bunch of projects going on, but I wanted to show you uh, how to make these plastic bases, how we make them, and, and I'd love to get some ideas from you guys as well. Now, we've been doing this about 10 years, so uh, we got kind of a process that, that we do. Uh, so I'm going to show you how you can make these at home on your own. I think they're really, really cool. So... Uh, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that we use here. So when we first started off, all we did was use the plastic packaging material that we got miniatures in. And that's not a bad place to start at all. I would I would really recommend this. I, this is not... We still have a bunch of miniatures that are packaged on this stuff. All you want to do is get down to the, uh, you know, the flat plastic there. You know, I had I had some folks ask me if this was acetate, and I don't really know. I, you know, that's that's outside of my pay grade. So uh, when I think of acetate, I really think of that flimsy plastic that's used in um, like overhead projectors. Are those things even used anymore? I don't know, but that's what I think of uh, when I think of acetate. And this is fairly rigid stuff. I guess it's semi rigid. So look at that. So you got a nice little bounce to it there, and it's it's pretty firm. So that's the plastic that we started off using when we said, "Hey, what if we tried doing this uh, out of plastic?" We started doing this about ten years ago. So the next thing that we do is we get one of these little tools. This one uh, I got just this year because I felt like I wanted to get some new ones. Put it in there like so, and give it a punch. And there is your plastic base. Look at that. I'm going to get some glare on it. See if I can get some glare on it there so you can see it. But then it just kind of disappears. Look at that. Uh, nothing wrong with that plastic right there. Uh, cheap. Uh, you know, it's free. If you're like me, uh, you got some of this stuff laying around. So you can just knock out some punches. Let's talk real quick about the tool. Now this... Uh, don't just go down and buy anything because uh, I do prefer, when I can find them, EK Tools. So EK Tools is the one that you want to look for. Now I have some one here that was, I got this back in 2017. And I'll show you it. It's, uh, this, was, uh, this one is going to do a, a 20 millimeter hole. Or for those of you that would prefer to be more accurate, it's more like a, a 19. There is your plastic base. Get some glare. See if I can get some glare on it. There you go. So there you can see it. So there are, there are cheaper brands out there, in my opinion, quality-wise. And they may cost about the same. But quality-wise, they're just not going to stand up. If you see any of them that have this kind of hingy sort of thing like this, avoid these. These will not have enough pressure. You'll not be able to put enough oomph into this to make it cut because it's got a separate little plastic piece pushing on the lever down there, and that's just not going to do it. So these are nearly useless. It doesn't matter what size you're trying to do. Uh, I, would, I would avoid this type here. Um, if you can, specifically look for EK tools. They don't they don't sponsor this. They don't know that I do this, you know, or anything like that, and that's fine. Uh, I'm just telling you what I use, and what, over 10 years of doing this, I have found that this brand will stand up much better than, than anything else that I've found so far. Uh, you, got the, you got the free version right there. You got the free version. Now, the next thing is uh, the money version. So, the next thing that I would recommend using is Ultra Pro Top Loader uh, Plastic. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? So Ultra Pro Regular Top Loader. Now really be careful, you know, and, and make sure you're not getting the little plasticky, uh, you know, deck protectors and things like this. You got to look for something that says Top Loader on it. You got to make sure you're getting something that has the nice semi-rigid plastic. Now, when you get these, you need to cut off that edge. And I would, I would tell you to, you, you could slide this into the tool and think you're going to do it twice as fast by cutting two pieces of plastic. Don't do it that way. 
you're going you're gonna to shorten the lifespan of your cutter significantly uh, if you're trying to cut through two pieces of plastic over and over. So just cut off that outer edge. Here, let me see if I can put it on camera for you so you can see what I'm actually doing. Just cut off that outer edge. You don't have to be real, you know, careful about it. You know, just keep your fingers out of there, boys and girls. Make sure you have your mom or dad watching you. Uh, so cut off that outer edge, and then you got two little pieces of plastic here. Uh, this is actually far more cost effective than you think it is. This, you know, you could buy one of these whole boxes, and what does it come with? Twenty-five of them in there. Twenty-five of them in there, and you're going to get two of these pieces of plastic for every one of those. That gives you basically fifty of these little rectangles. And you're going to get, you know, six to nine bases out of this, depending on how big of them you're, you're making. Um, so for, uh, you know, you're getting these for what, like three, four, five dollars or so for a whole uh, box of these, and you're going to make, you know, a lot of bases out of it. Anyway, pretty cost effective. And I'll show you here. Put it in there. Line it up with the holes and snap it and there's there's your base i really do prefer 20 millimeter bases so look at this group of figures right here those were all done on 20 millimeter bases except for mr big and that's a 25 millimeter or one inch base so we used to do all kinds of bases you know uh, we used to do, uh, you know, the little gravel bases and stuff like that. You know, if we were doing a single setting, uh, if we were doing something like, oh, like World War II, if we were doing Africa Corps or something like that, uh, then the clear bases really wouldn't make much sense. You know, the reason that I like doing the clear bases is because we could we be switch between settings so often with our pulp figures. We had a hard time deciding on a, on a base that would really work. We kind of started really simplifying things and just kind of dropping it down to just as, as you know, nondescript of a base as we could do. And even then, that really wasn't working for us. Uh, but, you know, when you compare figures like, oh, you know, when this monster is in, in, on, on ground, it's on ground. And this really doesn't look too bad here, does it? That's, that doesn't look bad. But what if we... What if we put those creatures inside a building? What if we put those creatures inside of a building? Then what do we have? You know, one of those bases just completely disappears, and the other one creates a nice uh, tuft of, of ground around the, around the beastie. War gamers in general, I think we kind of are very forgiving of that sort of thing, but you don't have to be. You don't have to ignore it. You can go, you know what? If I just put some plastic base, clear plastic bases on my figures, then, then I don't have to actually pretend that that tuft of ground following my werewolf around is is acceptable. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else? Is that it? Let's see. I talked. Oh, the different shapes and sizes. Different shapes and sizes real quick. So here's a big uh, inch and a half one right here. Got that one this year. Here's a two and a half inch one, and what we, what I like to use this for is not only for really big monsters, but I'll also use this for airplane propellers and stuff like that. And then if you like ovals, you can find those. Now this isn't an EK tool, but this one is very similar to EK tools, so that worked out pretty good too. The metal that they use on this, I have to assume that it is like an aluminum. It's not a particularly high grade of metal that's used on these. Uh, and that's why you can't really do really thick stuff or, you know, really hard stuff. You got to be careful of that because you can ruin your blade uh, trying to do something that you really shouldn't be doing with it. Plastic, this plastic's right on the edge of, of that sort of thing. So be careful of that as well. All right. Uh, leave questions and comments down below. Let me know what you think about this process, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.